ECM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. So, as a part of EM Rapid 2023, we are going to discuss a case, uh, the topic of angle injuries and knee injuries. So, first we will come to the angle injuries. So, the initial part, we will initially study about the anatomy of the knee joint. So, knee joint com uh, comprises of two joints, the tibio femoral joint and patello femoral joint and the knee joint has the, the joints are uh, shown here the tibio femoral and the patello femoral and contain also four ligaments uh, the ligaments are the medial and lateral collateral ligament and the anterior cruciate and posterior cru um, cruciate ligament and so also the the, uh, the knee has contain meniscus the medial and lateral meniscus so and uh, in, uh, in the knee, the back side you have the popliteal fossa. The popliteal fossa contains the new, main neurovascular structures of the knee, which are the tibial nerve and the common perineal nerve, then popliteal artery and the popliteal vein. So in a, uh, in, in cases of knee injury, these uh, these structures can be injured, and these are the structures you have to look forward in the examination of the knee. So coming to the examination, you have to determine the exact mechanism of injury for that uh, it will help in uh, finding the uh, where is the actual uh, injury located and what all structures are involved so we have to uh, look for any previous orthopedic injury on the, that side any previous surgical procedures then you have to compare the knee with the opposite knee so any uh, uh, this has to be compared in cases of any ligament injury we can uh, find it out yes but then there is any new injuries on the side of injury of the assessment assessing joint so we have to assess the gait of the patient if patient is able to walk and they have to uh, whether they are, have the ability to uh, perform a straight leg raised uh, raised chest so it will uh, evaluate the extensive complex of the knee structure and you have to evaluate for the uh, uh, any ecchymosis swelling any effusion of the knee joint, any masses, any patellar dislocation, or any uh, size changes, any muscle mass, or any healthy mass. So, evidence of any local traumas, or any, like any, any evidence of any abrasions that can be noted. So, the, when the patient is in supine position, so uh, we have to look for whether the legs length are equal. So, we can look for the where some condition where the shortening of leg occurs mostly it occurs in during the fracture of the hip region then I have to ask the patient to demonstrate the uh, range of motion of the knee joint as well so uh, I have to uh, the patient have to be uh, have to ask to give the best possible active range of motion so we have then we have to assess for the neurovascular function of the joint the popliteal uh, pulsation have to be noted then sensation over the knee joint and uh, as the distal part of the sensation have to be noted. So I uh, had to pal uh, palpate for a non-tender areas first. Then you have to work up towards the tender area, or else the patient uh, will be apprehensive for the further evaluation. Then you have to palpate the patella, patellar facets, proximal fibula, fem uh, femoral tibial condyles. Then I had to uh, look for any joint diffusion, tenderness, increased temperature then uh, sensations and pulses so uh, pal uh, you have to look for a uh, popliteal space masses swelling or pulses then uh, in knee flexion you have to palpate uh, medial and lateral joint lines which uh, shows the meniscal uh, injuries then uh, medial lateral collateral ligaments which will uh, show the ligamentous injury then popliteal artery injury uh, can be occurred from any fractures of the knee like uh, femoral condyle fractures then uh, uh, may displaced tibial fractures, ligamentous injuries like that. So popliteal artery circulation must be restored within eight hours to avoid amputation. And uh, I had to measure uh, the distal pulses on ED admission. And uh, after any ma manipulation also, we had to uh, look for any, uh, how the distal pulses are there. So a, a diminished pulse will uh, be a concern as vascular injury is a, a great threat and we have to uh, uh, look forward for the same. Perineal nerve injuries uh, can be result from the uh, ligamentous injuries or knee dislocation and uh, 
fibular head fractures or avulsions can be associated with the cranial nerve injury. Then uh, for, uh, coming to the imaging for knee injuries. So X-ray knee, uh, here we have to look for fat fluid level, like lipohemarthrosis, you can be seen here, lipohemarthrosis. So uh, will, it will suggest intraatricular fracture and can be uh, a different uh, X-ray lateral view as shown in the figure. And uh, oblique views can be help, helpful in uh, detecting subtle tibial fractures. Then X-ray sun rays or skyline view can be used for uh, looking for any fractures in the patella. Then tunnel view for uh, yeah, tibial spines fractures and CT might be needed uh, uh, for uh, tibial platyphages. So uh, whether to need an X-ray or not, this can be uh, used with the two uh, rules are there, Ottawa knee rule and Pittsburgh knee, knee rule. The Pittsburgh knee rule is more uh, specific. So in Octa Octava knee rule, uh, radiograph is uh, warranted if any of the below criteria is met. Like the patient's age is greater than 55 years with uh, uh, or uh, tenderness on the head of fibula or isolated tenderness on the patella. So, or the patient is in uh, inability to, to flex the knee to 90 degree or able, not able to walk for more than 4 steps. Uh, in the Pittsburgh knee rule, whether the patient had a fall or uh, blunt trauma mechanism, if, there, uh, if the patient has asked the same, we will look for the age. And if the age is less than 12 or greater than 50, we will uh, go for the x-ray. And if that is uh, no, we will uh, ask the patient to walk. For uh, four steps. If the patient is able to bear his weight, then there is no need for radiography. And if he is not able to bear, then we'll have to look for X-ray. So the next one we have to look is then the patella fracture. So patella fracture, we have a transverse fracture, then comminuted fracture, then avulsion of the patella. So you have to look for any focal tenderness on the patella, any uh, effusion or swelling. Then I uh, had to look for the extensor mechanism uh, by asking the patient to uh, do the straight leg raised trip, just. Then uh, usually we ha will have a, a non operative management in uh, of, uh, in that extensor mechanism but uh, fractures with uh, less than 2 millimeter of step off and less than 3 millimeter of the displacement of the fracture. Here we go for knee immobilizer, rest, analgesia and we will be following uh, the patient with the radio uh, radiographs so other than that uh, in displaced fracture with the three uh, greater than three mm or uh, any with the disruption of extensor mechanism uh, or articular in ingrogity greater than two mm will uh, go with the, the initial management with open direction and dynamic fixation so severely communicated fracture surgical debridement of small fragments or suturing of the quadriceps and patella tendons may be needed in open fracture, irrigation is initially warranted, followed by antibiotic, anti-staphylococcal antibiotics, and debridement and irrigation in the operating room. So, other fractures coming uh, in the knee region, like femoral condylar fracture, usually occurs by fall with the axial load. Uh, so, here or blow to the distal femur. Here, in, uh, in non displaced or incomplete fractures will uh, do the splinting and orthopedic referral whereas in displaced fracture uh, you'll have to uh, do splinting and uh, orthopedic uh, consult for ORIF and in tibial spine or tuberosity fractures which occur used to force to direct uh, force directed against the flexed proximal tibia uh, where in, in here they even in non displaced fracture or incomplete fractures immobilization and uh, uh, in full extension and orthopedic referral is needed. In but that can be done in two to seven days. And in complete or displaced fracture, early orthopedic referral and, uh, is needed. You can uh, go into ORIF also. So in tibial tuberosity fracture, which occurs due to sudden force to the flexed knee with the quadriceps contracted, here incomplete or small avulsion fracture immobilization is more than enough. Whereas in complete avulsion fracture, ORIF is needed. The next one is tibial plateau fracture. In tibial plateau fracture, valgus or varus forces combined with axial load uh, that drives the femoral condyle into the tibia. Here, uh, non displaced lateral fracture, knee immobilizer with a non weight bearing and in orthopedic referral in, 
two to seven days. So uh, other uh, and the depression of the articular surface early orthopedic consult for ORF needed. So non displaced we will go for knee immobilizer, whereas in uh, depression in the uh, articular surface we will uh, we'll go for ORF. So then coming to the ligaments and meniscal injuries. Injuries uh, from traumatic forces or uh, in, like uh, 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 including hyperextension, valgus or virus stresses or AP uh, displacement of, uh, which will cause the ligament and meniscal tears. So uh, here in initial part we will discuss about medial and lateral collateral ligament injuries. So the me uh, medial collateral ligament uh, is uh, one of the uh, med the medial uh, collateral ligaments as discussed earlier uh, this uh, uh, if at all there is any injury in the medial collateral ligament we can uh, check the uh, function of the ligament with the valgus testes here uh, we will uh, test the uh, knee with the flexion uh, flexion at, uh, flexion to the give a valgus uh, mobil mobilization of the knee joint and at knee at a uh, zero degree and at 30 degree uh, this will check the integrity of the medial capsular and ligament structures. So, other than that, uh, for lateral collateral ligament, we give a varus stress test 0 and 30 degrees towards the uh, means varus towards the medial side will uh, give the uh, stress test towards the medial side, and valgus side will give the stress test towards the lateral side. So anterior cruciate ligament injury. Here the anterior cruciate ligament injury, mostly the mechanism of injury is like a deceleration or hyperextension or marked internal rotation of tibia <coughs> on the femur. So after the injury, the patient can, uh, can be associated with swelling, traumatic effusion and characteristic, characteristically the patient uh, the, after the injury can have a pop, uh, directly the pop sound can occur following injury. And for, uh, for diagnosing the same, we have uh, some tests like Lachman test, then anterior drawer test. Here, yeah, Lachman test, uh, we do it with the both uh, hand. The one hand will be over the thigh region, uh, which will stabilize the thigh. The other hand moves the tibia anteriorly. And uh, uh, this is done with the knee flex to 30 degrees, when we we'll look for the integrity of the crucial element. The next one is anterior drawer test, which is done with the knee, uh, knee, knee flex to 90 degree and uh, hip flex to 45 degree. We will uh, look for whether how we will with the both hand we will draw the uh, leg uh, tibia from the femur in the anterior direction. Which will also uh, will look for how, how much is the mobility of the crucial uh, ligament. Then uh, the next one is the pivot shift uh, test. Here uh, the patient is lying supine and uh, the heel of the foot will be, uh, uh, will uh, lift the heel of the foot and uh, hip will be in a like 45 degree flexion and knee will be fully extended. So uh, the other, our other hand will grasp, uh, grasp the knee with the thumb uh, behind the fibula head and we will uh, internally rotate the angle and knee and uh, will apply a valgus force to the knee and flex the knee at that same time if and if there is an anterior subluxation of tibia a, a sudden visible audible or palpable direction of uh, subluxation occurs about 20 to 30 degree uh, flexion this this is a uh, sign of anterior crucial ligament injury and uh, which will be recurring uh, to stabilize the knee in this position so you can see that uh, we will be shift, uh, lifting the hand and with the both hands, uh, the one hand over the fibular head and the thigh, the other hand over the heel region and we will lift the head, we will give uh, internal rotation and valgus stress at that time itself. And uh, we will be uh, looking for any uh, signs of any subluxation at that point of time. So in posterior cruciate ligament injury, we will, uh, uh, this, this is just opposite of the anterior cruciate ligament. And, uh, so here uh, we will do with the posterior drawer test and sac sign. So we can see the posterior drawer test. Uh, this is just opposite to the anterior drawer test where uh, we give the pressure to the posterior side. Whereas in anterior drawer test we give the pressure to the anterior side. 
and in the nest just will be doing the sag thing here uh, we will look for any sag means the sag or drop back of the tibial tubercle because of the as the uh, pcl is uh, integrity is lost the leg will go down means uh, the leg uh, the, there will be sagging of the uh, knee which is uh, seen at the 45 degree flexion of the hip and 90 degree flexion of the knee then for the treatment uh, usually the injuries involved in single ligament can be treated with uh, brace ice packs uh, elevation nsids and uh, ambulation as, as soon as the uh, patient is comfortable so complete rupture uh, can be uh, in isolated ligament injury can be treated with conservatively with the strain like adhesive strengthening exercises range of motion exercises and bracing whereas arthrosynthesis may be <coughs> needed for uh, tens effusions of the knee the next one we have to look forward is the meniscal injury meniscal injury uh, usually uh, occur following cutting or squatting or twisting maneuvers that uh, following uh, these maneuvers can cause the meniscal injury and they will the patient will be having like a locking of the knee due, during the flexion or extension so uh, patient when a uh, patient will try to walk from a standing or sitting position will uh, have sensation of whooping flicking or snapping sound and the instability of the joint will be uh, the uh, most significant thing here uh, and tenderness he, he will be noted on the this side and it can be definitely diagnosis uh, can be made with the mri or health or help of arthroscopy for arthroscopy we can uh, keep for can be done for diagnostic purpose as well as a surgical treatment purpose the next part is a log knee which is occurring due to torn meniscus and for this one we had to do uh, close reduction under procedure sedation so uh, we'll uh, position the patient with the leg hanging over the edge of the table and the knee will be at 90 degrees of flexion so uh, for unlocking the knee uh, after a period of relaxation uh, you have to apply longitudinal traction to the knee and along with it we'll give internal and external rotation this will help in unlocking the knee if this uh, uh, procedure is and successful, we will go for arthroscopy, operative arthroscopy. Then the next one we have to look for is the knee dislocation. The, here anterior dislocation is the most common one. Then there are posterior lateral dislocations. So uh, if the uh, dislocation is severe, there will be spontaneous reduction of the dislocation. So a, severe, a severely injured knee that is unstable in multiple direction is a uh, high chance there is uh, a, a severe injury and spontaneous uh, dislocation had occurred so uh, this is uh, there is high incidence of the uh, any complication with severe injury like uh, uh, popliteal lateral injury perineal nerve injury so for the same we have to apply longitudinal traction on the affected knee and we have to uh, look for uh, look for any other injuries and splint the uh, lower extremity with the knee at 20 degree flexion and uh, after the reduction uh, to examine the uh, serial neurovascular examination has to be done so the splinting has to be done in such a way that uh, uh, serial neurovascular examination can be done so re uh, x-ray imaging has, should be done after the splinting so you can see anterior dislocation of the knee whereas in posterior dislocation and lateral dislocation so a serial neurovascular examination should be performed and uh, if patients distal pulses are present before and after reduction and the abpa is greater than 0.9 patient can be observed with serial neurovascular checks for 24 hours so for a patient whom distal pulses are asymmetric and abp i is less than 9 then uh, there is high chance of vascular injury and we will have to go for ct angiogram or angiography so the next one is patella dislocation here dislo uh, patella is dislocated mostly occurring due to twisting injury uh, to the extended knee patella is usually uh, displaced over the lateral condyle which will result in the pain and deformity of the knee and you can obviously see the deformed patella over the lateral condyle then uh, the reduction can be uh, occurred, uh, accomplished with adequate analgesia by flexing the hip then uh, gently extending the knee 
and they're guiding the patella back into the place. I had to get the x-rays of the patella and knee to exclude any fracture and uh, had to uh, give a knee immobilizer uh, for uh, uh, after the reduction and uh, had to uh, patient have to be in crutches following it and uh, uh, you had uh, following it following which we'll have to give partial weight bearing and straight leg raises to strengthen the cordyceps and uh, we'll be uh, we'll ask the patient to review an orthopedist within the one week and in case of irreducible uh, patella dislocation surgical correction might need it so the next one you have to look is the patella tendon rupture you usually which occur following forceful contraction of cordyceps muscle or a falling in the flex knee patient will have severe pain and swelling and you will be unable to do the straight leg trace steps. So, uh, can uh, be partial or complete tear. So, in complete tear, uh, it will warrant for surgical repair and incomplete tear can be treated with immobilization. The next one is patella tendonitis. Uh, this is seen in runners or high jump ways and uh, the first place like basketball or volleyball place. And uh, this occurs uh, following uh, version when going from sitting or standing. The pain will be more when uh, patient uh, from standing, uh, sitting or sitting to standing, jumping or running up hills. So, initial treatment will be like uh, necessities are uh, strengthening exercises, muscle strengthening exercises. Steroid is avoided here. The Then, the next part of our topic, angle injuries. We will uh, initially go with the anatomy of the angle. So, uh, the Medial, uh, ligam uh, medial uh, ligaments, lateral ligaments and syndesmosis are the three joint groups which help to stabilize the angle joint. So in lateral uh, lateral ligaments, uh, the main ligaments uh, the, which are stabilizing the angle joints are the anterior talofibular joint, then posterior talofibular joint, then calcaneofibular joint. In ang other one, the medial view will have the deltoid ligament which is comprising of four structures anterior um, talo, tibio talar ligament then tibio navicular ligament then tibio calcaneal ligament and posterior tibio talar ligament and the from the ap view the syndesmosis structures which stabilizes are the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament and the transverse ligament so uh, for examination of the angle joint injuries, we have to look for the, as I said earlier, like the knee joint itself, we have, we'll have to look for mechanism and ti timing of the injury. Uh, we'll have to look for the joint above and below the angle, uh, the site of injury uh, and look for any con concomitant injuries. So we have to suspect masino fracture if there is tenderness of the fibula hit and uh, uh, to look for any active and passive uh, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion and uh, full ROI movements have to be looked. Perineal tendon injuries can uh, can be there uh, when it will be presenting like painful aversion usually occurring due to forced dorsiflexion. Then there is anterior droid test. Here we can see we'll, uh, anterior, uh, the foot will catch hold of the leg with one hand uh, whereas we'll, uh, anteriorly will lift the heel with the other hand. This is anterior droitus, uh, which is used for finding the anterior talar ligament, uh, anterior talofibular ligament injuries. Then there is crossed leg test and skews test, which is used for syndesmosis injury. In crossed leg test, we will compress the fibula towards the tibia, just about the midpoint of calf. And in skews test, we will uh, skews the calf just above the angle joint. Then there is inversion stress test where we will check for the calcaneofibular instability. Then we will check for Achilles tendon integrity and neurovascular examination as well. So imaging, as, as told earlier, the, there was an Ottawa knee rule for uh, imaging of the knee. There is an Ottawa angle rule for imaging of the angle and foot. So in uh, x-rays, uh, x-ray asset is needed if there is pain in posterior edge of tip of medial uh, tip of lateral malleolus or posterior edge of tip of medial malleolus or there is inability to bear a weight then uh, angle x-ray is warranted if there is uh, tenderness of the base of fifth metatarsal or tenderness of navicular region with uh, inability to bear weight then x-ray foot x-ray foot is warranted so the views for uh, 
angle x rays are like ap view then oblique view lateral view and uh, point of care ultrasound can be taken for looking the Achilles tendon injuries CT and MRI can also be done CT can be used for operative planning by orthopedic surgeons and uh, for looking for community fractures then tendon injuries coming to tendon injuries perineal tendon injuries uh, this occur due to hyper dorsiflexion and it can be seen like uh, uh, ecchymosis or tenderness over the posterior edge of lateral malleolus then there is Achilles tendon rupture this occurred due to sudden plantar flexion and palpation of the, we can look for palpation of the uh, the defect side we can look for any as the rupture occurs we will be able to palpate the defect and the test which we use is the Thompson test here we can see that patient uh, can, is in prone position and uh, will uh, excusing excuse the calf muscle on the affected side uh, there will be absence of plantar flexion during the squeezing this is a positive test which can be uh, seen in achilles tendon rupture uh, ultrasound can be done to look for in the, the achilles tendon in integrity and the treatment is surgical re repair so the next one we'll have to look is the ligament injuries of the angle joint so angle sprain uh, it can be divided into three grade one is the there is no te tearing of the ligaments with minimal functional loss then there is grade two uh, there will be partial tear with some loss of functional ability then grade, grade three the, it will have complete tear with loss of function and uh, most commonly the uh, lat uh, lateral ligaments are the one which are affected lateral angle uh, lateral angle angle sprain with uh, choker due to inversion injury medial lateral ligament uh, tears are all usually associated with fibular fracture or tear to the fib uh, tibia fibular syndesmosis from this occur due to aversion injury so treatment is as a price protocol price protocol comprises of pre p for for protection r for rest then i for ice compression ice and compression then uh, e for elevation so price uh, protocol should be done within 24 hours and uh, early mobilization is the next part for the same motion and strength injuries uh, strength strengthening exercise within 48 to 72 uh, hours then followed by endurance training for uh, each specific person so in lateral ligament sprain patient with stable joint we can give uh, angle or band uh, angle brace with uh, associated with analgesic treatment so a patient with uh, who is unable to bear weight but have a stable joint we can uh, provide the patient with angle brace and crutches and uh, we'll uh, ask them to review an orthopedic op so uh, for uh, early orthopedic referral is needed for medial ligament sprain and syndesmosis complex sprains so the next part is angle dislocation so a posterior dislocation is the most common one and uh, usually this uh, dislocation is associated with fracture posterior dislocation occur following backward force on plantar flexed foot resulting in the rupture of tibio fibular ligaments or lateral malleolar fracture anterior dislocation usually results from the force on the dorsiflex foot with an associated anterior tibial fracture a lateral dislocation results in ligament uh, disruption and fracture of one or both malleoli in this situation we have to look for the neurovascular function and if there is any compromise on the neurovascular function immediate reduction in the procedure sedation is warranted and after the reduction immobilization is needed and if the reduction fails we will have to go with the open technique so our next one is angle fractures unimalleolar fracture bimalleolar or trimalleolar fracture can be seen here the treatment is we have to uh, maintain the anatomical relationship so uh, reduce it and immobilization with the cast and surgical repair or uh, casting if needed so uh, comminuted fractures can uh, cause com uh, compartment syndrome fat embolus or uh, this can also uh, go into poor healing uh, yeah, until a definitive treatment is there uh, we have will do with the posterior splint and setup uh, this is done under analgesia and uh, we will advise the patient to not to bear weight. So in open fractures, we will uh, go with initial irrigation followed by uh, triple antibiotics like IV cephasol, metronidazole, aminoglycosides and tetanus immun immunization with ortho and splint the fracture to reduce the bleed. So 
so next part is the uh, timing of the consultation ortho consultation in case of angle injuries immediate consultation is needed for all open injuries all fracture dislocation and in dislocation trimalleolar fractures bimalleolar fractures unstable unimalleolar fractures and machinous fracture whereas ortho consultation can be deferred for uh, in stable unimalleolar fractures unstable ligamentous injuries and uh, acute perineal dislocation and ortho consultation is needed within one week in potential and uh, potentially unstable sprain that it, that's it for the knee and angle injuries uh, thank you